After that, we move on to the next parable, which is mentioned in Surah at tahrim And here we have two parables back to back. The first is in verse 10 of Surah at tahrim and then the second one is verse 11 of Surah at tahrim which we will take in the next session bi idhnillah so as for the first parable then this is the parable that Allah gives us concerning the disbelieving women and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 10 of surah at-tahrim ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا امْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَامْرَأَةَ لُوطٍ كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحَيْنِ فَخَانَتَاهُمَا فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَا عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَقِيلَ دُخُلَ النَّارُ مَعَ الدَّاخِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah presents a parable of those who disbelieve. The wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut. They were both under two of our righteous servants, but they betrayed them. So their husbands were of no benefit to them against Allah whatsoever. And it was said, enter the fire along with those who enter and so earlier on in this surah in the very beginning of this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking about his wives and how some of his wives behaved in a way that was not suitable. And so Allah tells us how the Prophet ﷺ disclosed something to one of his wives, a secret, and how that wife went to another, another wife and told her about that secret. So Allah informed the Prophet ﷺ about what happened. And so the Prophet ﷺ went to that wife and told her what she had done. So she, she said, who told you this? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah told me this. And so the point is that here we have the behavior of some of his wives that was not right and how Allah right after that Allah you know gives them the opportunity to make tawbah in tatuba ila Allahi faqad zaghat qulubukama you know you have the opportunity both of you these two wives you have the opportunity to repent to Allah for what you did And so after that, at the end of the surah, at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us two parables, one of the disbelieving women and the other one which we will take in the next session of believing women. As if Allah is asking the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who do you want to be among? And these two parables Allah gives us, the first parable concerning the disbelieving women, are two women who were under 
two prophets of Allah. And the other parable that Allah gives us is of the believing women. And one of them is Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, and the other was Maryam. And so as for this parable regarding the disbelieving women, it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling these women, the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that look, your relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, you are the wives of the Messenger of Allah. Such a huge honor. But, be advised that such a relationship will not benefit you at all if you disobey Allah and His Messenger. You are responsible for whatever you do, your actions. Each and every single one of us is responsible for what we do in this life, irrespective of who we may be or who we may be related to. That won't benefit us at all on the Day of Judgment before Allah. And so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this parable of the disbelieving women, how Allah compares them to these two disbelieving women, the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut. And so there are some people who, you know, they indulge in sin, thinking that, you know what, we will be saved on the Day of Judgment because of one reason or the other. But mostly, people think that they will be saved from the punishment of Allah because of their relationship to certain righteous people. So they think that such a relationship will be a means of saving them from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people, they come from the lineage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are the descendants of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so they think that because of that lineage, you know, that will help them on the Day of Judgment and they could live however they want in this life. And they don't have to follow the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. They don't have to be practicing Muslims. This is only one example. But you have other examples as well, how there are perhaps scholars whose children think that because my father is a scholar, you know, I will benefit from that relationship on the Day of Judgment or a wife who is married to a righteous man, and so on and so forth. And so in order to you know, cut off such thoughts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the example of these two women who were married to two of the best human beings to ever walk the face of this earth, two of the prophets of Allah, Nuh alayhi salam, and Lut alayhi salam. And both of these women, they died without accepting the message that their husbands came with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what was the consequence of that? As Allah tells us here, وَقِيلَ دُخُولَنَّا رَمَعَ Enter the hellfire with the disbelievers. And their relationship with Nuh and Lut, this relationship will not benefit them on the Day of Judgment. As Allah tells us here and emphasizes, فَلَمْ يُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Allah tells us here that their husbands were of no benefit to them against Allah and against the punishment of Allah. And so, this sends a clear message across to those who think that they will escape 
the punishment of Allah in the hereafter due to their relationship with those whom Allah is pleased with. That if anyone was to benefit from such a relationship, then it would have been, it would have been us. And so these two women were the wives of prophets and messengers. And if they did not benefit from that relationship, then how can anyone else? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us of this elsewhere in the Quran, how our relationships with people will not benefit us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن تَنْفَعَكُمْ أَرْحَامُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَفْصِلُ بَيْنَكُمْ that never will your relatives or your children benefit you. On the Day of Judgment, Allah will judge between you. And so the only thing that will benefit us on the Day of Judgment before Allah is our deeds, our Iman and our deeds, that's it. Not our relationships. And that's why we have other examples as well, besides these two women such as Ibrahim السلام, whose father died as a mushrik just because his son was a prophet of Allah a messenger he won't benefit the father will not benefit from his son on the day of judgment likewise coming back to Nuh السلام, Allah tells us in the Quran about what happened to his son the son of Nuh and you know how Nuh السلام, pleaded to Allah that, Oh Allah, you promised me that you will save me and my family. So what about my son who drowned in the flood? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, rebuked Nuh السلام, and said, Your son is not from your family. Meaning that your family are only the believers, not the disbelievers among them. And so the reality is that no person, no matter who he is, will benefit from anyone, no matter who they are, on the Day of Judgment. Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum waqshaw yawman لَا يَجْزِي وَالِدٌ عَنْ وَلَدِهِ وَلَا مَوْلُودٌ هُوَ جَازٍ عَنْ وَالِدِهِ شَيْئًا Allah addresses us and says, O mankind, fear your Lord. And fear a day in which no father will avail his son, nor will a son avail his father at all. And so this is the parable that Allah gives us here of the disbelieving women. Among the lessons that we learn from this parable is first and foremost that true deprivation and true loss is when you have the means of guidance right in front of you and you choose not to take it. That is what you call true, true deprivation. But rather you, you know, I mean, it's one thing where you have the means of guidance right in front of you and you don't take it. And then even worse than that is to oppose the guidance and to fight against it and to fight against the messenger who has brought that guidance and to side with the people of misguidance and that is the example of Nuh and Lut of their wives they sided with with the kuffar the disbelievers of their people 
The second lesson that we learn here is that notice here how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says concerning the wives of Nuh alayhi salam and Lut. Kanata tahta abidaini min ibadina salihain. That these two women were under two of our righteous servants. What does this prove? It proves that wives are under the authority of men and not the other way around, nor, nor, is, uh, nor is the authority shared between them. In a husband and wife relationship, there is one who has authority and the other one who has to submit to that authority. And this is what we see from this verse. Allah says that these two women were under. Allah did not say that they were simply, you know, uh, equal partners or any other, you know, language, but rather Allah specifically mentioned this to remind the believing women that their husbands have authority over them and to remind the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one who you are under you are under his authority just like these two women were under the authority of of these messengers and so in Surah An-Nisa, Allah makes, makes this even more clear. الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ لِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ That men are in charge of women. Meaning the husbands have the authority over the women by right of what Allah has given one to the other. Meaning that Allah has given the man the responsibility to look after his family, to take care of them, to go out and make a living, to support them, and everything else that is the responsibility of the man and not the responsibility of the woman. The third lesson that we learn here is and this is a very, very important point to mention. And that is that the betrayal here, the betrayal of the wives that is mentioned here, as Allah says, فَخَانَتَهُمَا Allah says, these two women betrayed their husbands. We have to understand that the betrayal here is the betrayal of their religion, a creedal betrayal, not submitting to their to the religion, to Islam, that Nuh and Lut السلام, were sent with. It does not mean marital betrayal, meaning that here when Allah says that these two women betrayed their husbands, it does not mean that they cheated on them by sleeping with other men. Because some people, they may understand that by the word betrayal. Because betrayal means to cheat. And so we have to understand that is not what is meant here. And this is mentioned, you know, by many, many scholars of tafsir. Uh, all, the, all the way from the time of the companions and from the Salaf, they mentioned this, that what is meant by this betrayal is that they remained upon kufr. They remained upon kufr. And so what this means, especially in the context of Lut alayhi salam, because we know that Lut, his people, were involved in 
sexual deviancy. The people of Lut, they were involved in homosexual practices. So the wife of Lut السلام, the wife of Lut السلام, did not betray his husband in the sense that she was involved in the homosexual practices of her people. And that is because there is no prophet who Allah would allow that to happen with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the honor of the prophets and messengers where Allah would not let such a thing to happen. Where, you know, their wives would betray them in this, in this sense. And so the, the wife of Lut alayhi salam, she was not involved in those practices. But then somebody may ask, then why was she punished along with her people? Because Allah in the Quran tells us, wherever the story of Lut alayhi salam is mentioned, Allah tells us, and we saved Lut, and we saved his family, Except, except his wife. She was one of those who was doomed and destroyed. كانت من الغابرين إلا امرأته كانت من الغابرين Except his wife, she was among those who were destroyed. The answer is because, as we said, she remained upon kufr. But also in addition to that, in addition to that, she would spy for for you know these people against Lut alayhi salam so she would act as a spy for them and so when the guests came to Lut alayhi salam the angels that Allah sent in the form of human beings she immediately went and told her people and so you know they came after hearing that, you know, Lut alayhi salam has very handsome guests and they came banging on his door and, you know, demanded that they have access to these guests. It was because of her. The wife of Lut, she went and told them. So, this is why we need to be aware of the danger of supporting such people and their ways which we are starting to see, unfortunately, today, Muslims in the West, they are becoming pressurized to support the rights of homosexuals, the rights of the LGBT community. And so it's one thing to not agree with their ways while not transgressing against them. Just because we don't agree with them, we don't say that we should transgress against them. We're not saying that, you know, we should, you know, uh, transgress against them and, you know, insult them, etc. No, we're not saying that. But it does not mean that we therefore support them, endorse them. And so there are many Muslims, unfortunately, today who are being pressurized to stand for the rights of such people. And they're, you know, one of the, the, one of the justifications for that is that, you know, if we do this, then we are supporting a minority and they will also support us. But the reality is that this is just a delusion because if you think about it, why on earth would those people support us Muslims when they know very well what Islam teaches about their lifestyle? And so if there was anyone who they would support, it would be liberal-minded Muslims who are willing to distort Islam and say that, you know what, homosexuality is not a big deal. 
and so on and so forth. And so the point is that, the point here is that the wife of Lut alayhi salam was punished along with her people, not because she did what they did, but rather because she supported them, stood with them. Likewise, whoever supports such people today, supports their rights, stands with them, then it is feared that they will be punished along with them, whether it be in this dunya or in the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to grant us knowledge and insight. With that, we come to the end of this session. And insha'Allah ta'ala, we will wrap up this entire series in the next session bi idhnillahi ta'ala. Until then, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته